Welcome back again, talking men's hoops with Coach Ben Miller. Coach, um, last year the Braves made a, a thrilling and frankly unexpected run to the Peach Belt title game, got yourself as a, into the NCAA tournament for the first time. I mean, can the Braves do it again? How far can they go in this tournament? they got to be in the mix of the upper tier teams who can win sure, this thing. Sure. I, I really think, you know, like we said, anybody can win it. I mean, there's, it, there's so much parity in the league that um, it's going to be a great battle, and you know we have as good opportunity as anybody. Mm -hmm. Now I know you're kind of a humble fellow, coach, but I, I have to ask you this question also: what, what kind of personal satisfaction do you take as the head coach here from turning the Braves, frankly, from one of the weakest teams in Division Two into a, in, in just four years, really into a, into a program that can compete for conference titles, can compete for tournament berths, uh, and and the future is bright for this team? How, what kind of satisfaction do you take from that? Well, I'm really excited for our, our players because they, you know, guys that kind of bought in and um, signed up with us, you know, early on, guys, you know, the seniors who we're going to touch on here in a minute. But for those guys to come in and trust each other, trust the program and, and work, you know, especially those first couple of years when you're only winning six games, nine games, to stay the course and keep working as a team and as a program to get to that point mm -hmm. where we can compete. And that's been really rewarding. And really happy for those guys. I'm happy for the fans and, you know, the university as well. I mean, the, a winning basketball program is something that really can boost morale on campus, and so it's mm -hmm. exciting to see the team doing so well. Well, I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about your four seniors on this team, Coach, uh, and what they've meant for this club, and I'm just going to go alphabetically if sure. that's all right. And uh, we'll start with Marcus Heath. I know we talked about him a little bit, but talk a little bit about what Marcus has meant for this program. Yeah, you know, like he's had a lot of responsibility from day one, and uh, he's become evolved into a very strong leader. Um, he's really grown up as a person, on track to get his degree, um, and he's going to be very successful. I'd love to see him have a chance to keep playing uh, basketball-wise, but you know, when that's done, I know he's going to be successful. He's got a great work ethic, um, and you know, it's it's neat to see kids like that get rewarded with winning more games and um, the kind of seasons he, he's having as a senior. And, and I mentioned this to Coach Haskins earlier, but I'm sure that just like him, you take some satisfaction also in the, knowing that they're going to graduate and they're doing yes. things <laughs> academically as well. <clears throat> well, next on the list, excuse me, is, uh, is Nathan Priest. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about Nate. You know, Nate was the first player to commit and sign with us um, a couple weeks after I got the job. And, you know, uh, the previous Coach Thompson had done a great job really recruiting him and staying in touch with him before I even got here. So kind of made my job easy. He kind of, you know, fell in our laps when we got the job, but he's been a lot of fun to coach. He's a great kid, a great family. Um, you know, they, they, don't, they yeah. don't miss a game. <laughs> uh, there was even one game, Nate's sophomore year, he couldn't, he couldn't make it and uh, they still came to support the team. Um, and that's, it speaks a lot about them. And uh, Nate again is on track to graduate mm -hmm. and is, is, you know, he may have a chance, all these guys may have a chance to keep playing, but he's going to have that degree when he finishes up as well. And Nate's always brought that kind of eccentric energy to the court. You never know what <laughs> he's a character. You never know what you're yeah. going to get, Nate, in a good way, though. Yeah. I wanted to talk about Mike Robinson for a minute. He's the last holdover from the Tinsley mm -hmm. era. Um, and uh, Mike has been an excellent role player for this team. Talk about Mike. Yeah, Mike's. Um, you know, the last couple of years he's been a team captain, um, which sometimes is unusual for a guy that comes off the bench. And he started some for us and has always had a, a very big role. But, you know, he was with the, the last player with the previous staff, but really bought in and gave us a chance coming in as a new staff. And, um, you know, has tremendous respect from his teammates because there is, there is not a selfish bone in his body. Mm -hmm. um, comes from a great, great family. Um, has really done well with some things academically. Um, and uh, he's gonna be a very successful businessman. Um, he may have a chance to keep playing. He's, you know, he's 6'6", six, six, long athletic kid who uh, plays with a ton of energy. And is, you know, I, it's gonna be hard. I hope we have a chance to keep coaching these guys for a few more weeks, because it's gonna be hard to, you know, you never say goodbye, but sure. uh, I'm gonna miss coaching them all. And the last, uh, last senior on the list is uh, former walk-on Miguel Starkey. A little bit, what, yeah. how about Miguel? You know, before senior day, talking to Miguel, or I guess maybe afterwards, talking to each of those guys individually, one point I made is, as a kid growing up, my father always stressed with me that you always work hard, and even when you work hard, you may not get rewarded, but it doesn't change how you approach things, and you got to just keep working. And Miguel is a perfect example of a kid who came in and made it as a walk-on, kept working, never really got in the games, but his work ethic never wavered, whether he was playing 10 minutes or not getting it at all. Mm -hmm. And he just kept coming and working and working and working and had an unbelievable off season, came back in the best shape of his life and uh, has worked his way into being a, 
you know, a key contributor in games for us. So it's a great testament to him, his work ethic, and a great example for everybody in our program. And I'm sure it's nice to see him score some points to get a lot of playing time, and mm -hmm. I know that he's, he's happy about this as well. Now, Coach, we're not going to have much time to do this, but I know you're excited. Uh, you have to be excited about the, the classes. Redshirted, Colmaine Rose, Brandon Winford, Tyler Cordenbrock. Um, I wish I could give you more time to talk about him. That's but I, all right. I know that, uh, You'll get a chance to see him in action next year. <laughs> UNCP is getting watching. to the point where they're reloading and not rebuilding, and that's exciting for all of us. So good luck in the Definitely. tournament, and we hope you guys come back with a trophy. Thanks, Kevin. Now, that's all the time that we have for this week's edition of the Black and Gold Report. Until next week, go Braves.